Um, I think Mahmoud Darwish is um, perhaps uh, the most beautiful uh, aspect of Palestine, Palestinians, and uh, the Arab world and the Arab language in its uh, contemporary moment. Um, and having that much beauty, uh, certainly, as Sinan mentioned, uh, takes him beyond the local and the regional uh, into a global and a universal um, status. He was a very, a very shy, shy man um, who was, um, who people flocked to. And uh, he um, also was a very uh, gentle and generous man who knew a lot of people wanted so much from him, a cup of coffee, uh, a conversation, a signature. Um, uh, he had, um, he cherished his private life a lot because he also knew that his, most of his other life was uh, public. In his uh, great poem, Mural, he ends it uh, with the line, um, I am not mine, I am not mine, I am not mine. And uh, even in his uh, death, untimely and premature, um, he had, uh, he spoke true words. He had an amazing prescience and uh, it is part of his brilliance um, that all through the decades he uh, could always write things that you could return to 10 or 20 years later and realize that he had, um, he had, uh, he had an amazing sense of vision um, and, and timelessness. Fadi Judah, you translated his last work, The Butterfly's Burden. Can you talk about that? Uh, Mahmoud Darwish, as a, a poet who um, endlessly tried to renew himself. Again, Sinan said, you know, most accomplished poets, they stagnate in their um, twilight years, in their late styles, uh, in Adorno's um, um, uh, or Edward Said's phrase. But uh, Darwish uh, didn't believe in anything like that. He believed in a, a continual renewal of birth. And uh, he always loved his newer works, and I wanted, when I got in touch with him, to not focus on what most of the Arab uh, readers in the Arab world, uh, you know, uh, and even in, in the outside uh, the Arab world, always focus on his, you know, epic poems from the 80s and the 90s and even earlier than that. And he always wanted to take the reader with him to his newest work, to his newest um, elevation of, of language and aesthetic. Um, and I focused on his latest work, uh, the f I collected three books in one volume. Uh, the first book was called, uh, is called The Stranger's Bed, which is a collection of love poems, a dialogue between his eye and his uh, feminine eye. Um, and uh, it incorporates a lot of the fundamentals and traditional um, uh, canon, I guess, of love poetry. Um, developed into a contemporary and modern form uh, and ideal. Uh, and also a State of Siege, which was a memoir, lyric poem for the destruction of Ramallah, uh, the, uh, uh, the opening days of the Second Intifada. Uh, and then after that, uh, a beautiful book, which I think was uh, really a mark uh, of a new breakthrough in his uh, poetic uh, sensibility, don't apologize for what you've done. And in part, I wanted to do that because one of Darwish's brilliant um, uh, features, I guess, uh, is his ability to always change his language. And in uh, The Stranger's Bed was in 1998, and Don't Apologize for What You've Done was in 2003. And if you read the first poem in the book and you read the last poem in the book, you know that there has been a change in the language, uh, moving towards uh, more conversational uh, speech um, and perhaps daily speech, as he would tell me. Um, still a high lyric um, and complex metaphors. Um, but it was something I admired about him a lot. And um, 
uh, I think a lot of other people always admired his ability to always renew his work. And I wanted to put that in English. I don't think that the, un unfortunately, it saddens me to say um, that he's a latecomer into English. He has been celebrated the world over. But I think um, I wish um, that he had been received and celebrated in English um, since, again, as Sinan mentioned, uh, his, um, his rise to a class of world poet um, uh, in the mid-'80s and the early-'90s. I don't know if that was a problem of not finding uh, the right translators. It could be, but I'm not sure exactly that that would be the sole reason. I don't know exactly what the other reasons are. Fadi Judah, um, could you read the last poem, his final poem, that you are translating now? Um, no, unfortunately, I cannot. It's a poem that would probably take 20 minutes to read. It's um, an epic poem. Uh, called The Dice Player. Uh, Mahmoud Darwish called me about three months ago, told me about his deteriorating medical condition. And then I, a month later, I knew I, I read, uh, I, I heard that he had read the poem in Ramallah. And when I read it, I, I knew exactly that he was, um, uh, you know, betting or, you know, throwing the dice on the possibility that this would be his last poem. And he requested from me that I translate it. Um, I can tell you that it begins um, with, who am I to tell you, who am I to say to you what I say to you? And Darwish, Darwish's who am I in previous poems has always been at, uh, had the tone of a, more of a, of a true question that really, um, addresses the, the knowledge of the self. Uh, but in this poem, I think it took on a different tone of humility and, and resignation, because in its last stanza, he repeats it and he says, who am I to disappoint the void? Who am I, who am I? Fadi Judah, you're in Houston. You're a doctor there. You're a poet. And the first memorial service, funeral, has been held for him there before Ramallah. Can you talk about what happened in Houston yesterday and also how, um, how Mahmoud Darwish died? Well, he, he underwent um, a necessary um, major vascular surgery and uh, a surgery that uh, carries uh, a high amount of risk, sort of a catch-22. He was a, a, a brave man uh, who loved life in, and loved to live it in full dignity. And um, he decided that he did not want to um, live with the shadow of death or of sudden death hanging over him. And he decided to go with the hope of coming out uh, with a new life, uh, or a lease on life, if you will, with this major surgery, knowing very well that if something did go wrong, um, he will not be the same Darwish. And uh, I know in my heart that, uh, and I know he told me this personally, that he, um, um, he wanted that if things did go wrong in the surgery, which, of course, uh, as, as I said, it's a, it was a very high-risk surgery, that he would just wish not to, um, you know, um, not to survive it. And somehow I believe that his body willed it. Um, um, he's he's a, a very uh, f full of dignity, as I said, and he would not want to, to live uh, half the man or three-quarters of the man he used to be. Um, uh, it was, uh, there was a prayer um, for the dead, um, for his um, body uh, yesterday in the uh, Central Mosque in Houston. A, uh, about 200 people showed up. Um, and, um, and then later on in the evening, there was a memorial service uh, where um, several people um, 
uh, spoke and, and honored him, uh, and uh, also a representative from the uh, Palestinian Authority, Rafiq al Husseini, came uh, because several people uh, from the Palestinian Authority were coming to accompany the body back to Amman, Jordan, uh, I think, where it would arrive uh, today. Um, it was a service uh, where um, you can see the mixture um, of um, uh, public relations to Darwish, where, um, you know, most people don't know, you know, how Darwish loved his coffee or loved his milk or how he slept or how he woke or he was a larger-than-life figure for us. And I think for many of us, we, uh, 